Believe it or not, this is a context as form where we are fetching the name, email, phone number and the message from the user. But you will say, where are all these fields? We just have one text box. Yes, we are going to extract all this information from the message user is typing using the AI. So let's try this. When I hit send message, this message will go to the backend. Once done, you can see the message is here and it's stored in the local storage of the browser. See the name, email, the topic, real message. Oops, it missed the phone number. No worries, we can try with the image also. So I have this image which is exactly the same thing but in the image form. If I get it, send it, behind the scene we are using Llama 3.2 vision model to read this image and using the Olama structured output which real game changer in the field of local LLM. So all these things will happen in this video. So you need to stay till the end of the videos to see how all these magic happened. And obviously, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and comment your views about these kind of amazing things Olama is doing for running the models, the LLM models in local. And finally, the image reading is done and you can see from the image, it has got the real information with the phone number also. That's because of the structured output system created by Olama and this is the real game changer because now you can specify exactly what information you really want from the LLM model in the response. Previously, we were using the JSON which was not so effective. So we will see what was the problem with the JSON, then how we can solve with the structured output using just a curl command and then we will going to create the fast API application to see how we can implement this structured format in Python using the text only and finally we are going to use the Llama 3.2 vision model to create all these things in the fast API. So everything in this video. The structured output of Olama which is recently released is truly a game changer. Why? Because now you can actually define what could be the format of your output from the AI model. Just like let's say in the response you want the name but name should be the type of a string. Maybe you want languages, language should be type of array and each element of the array can be the string. And this is really, really important because now you can have the proper output. You know it's always going to be there. You can feed it to any API. You can just show to the user in the UI. Maybe you can just store in database, but you can do all these things if you know what should be the structure. And with this, yes, you are having them. You can use the curl command. You can use the Python and JavaScript with the Python. Instead of providing the format manually and setting in the JSON format, you can actually use the Pydantic model to provide the JSON schema. And similar to Python, we have a Pydantic. In JavaScript, we have a Zod. So you can use the Zod to define the actual JSON schema of your output. So how you get started? First, obviously you need to pull the latest version of the Olama. So if you have installed through NPM or Python or anywhere, just get the latest version of the Olama and on that you can try it. So before moving into the formatted or structured output, let's see if, what if we are not using the structured output. So here I have created the virtual environment and imported the chat from the Olama which I have already installed and then I have initiated one simple chat. Here I have provided the same text but now here what I want, I want to tell that hey, uh, extract name, email, phone number, and message from this text okay so here i'll say hey the text is uh, maybe i can do something like this and then i can use it with triple double quotes like this okay great now let's run this so we can run python main.py and once we are running this you will see that we are getting the output wow that's nice name email message phone number mm, okay that's nice what if i run it again then you will see the structure is a little different because this time it's having message context or text i don't want all these things so what we generally do with this kind of scenario is we tell to our chat or our olama that format is going to be the json so all the response we are getting is in the form of json instead of just plain text so here you can see we are not getting the exact response. So maybe we can type in JSON format and then if I run it again and you can see now we are getting the message in the JSON response, which is really, really mind blowing. 
But what happened is it sometimes is not providing the result or maybe sometimes it uses some other message, some other JSON field. Like here it has used a phone and here it has used a phone number. Second big, big problem is here all these phone number and everything is in the form of a string. Maybe I want just number. Here comes the formatted structured output. How we can do that? I can just get back and here I'm going to just say that the JSON response is like a type of object and then we provide the schema. Phone number is going to be number and this is not going to be the schema. It's going to be the properties and then it's going to be type and the type and finally we will say we have some required field. Once we have defined the format or the schema, then we just run and we will get what we are asking. We always get the JSON, we always get the field and you can see the field is phone, it's not phone number and it's in number, it's not in the double quotes or single quotes, it's not a string, it is the real power. So with this, we have done the first part is what was the problem and how this structured format is solving. Next, since we are using the Python, we can use the Pydantic model. So I'm going to just install pip install pydantic and after installing this pydantic model we can go at the top and define our contact information. Contact info is a pydantic model for us and we are going to define that phone is a string messages like this and this should be the base model, a base model not. So this base model will come from basically will come from pydantic so from pydantic import base model and email string. So this is going to be the email string. And now see the magic. Instead of providing all these things, what we are going to do, we will say we have the contact info and then we say give me the JSON structure of this schema. Okay, now we have all these things. We have defined the Pydantic model and now if I run it uh, like uh, this and then we will get the same structure output from our information we have provided. Now what if I don't provide the phone number then what's going to happen because phone number is important. So it's given it's as a minus one which basically says that something is there in the name of phone number as integer. So what we can do we can go here and we can say hey this could be a none field if it's not available. So in the response we are now going to get the null because it's not yet available. Cool. What next? We need to create the fast API application and create the simple UI to send this information and see the output in our local storage. So finally, we have created this simple UI where I can just write anything, send a message using a simple JavaScript. I am going to send the information to our backend and then on the backend, we have created the fast API application. Here is the home page which is simply returning the contact.html. We are using the Jinja to have all these templating engine and you can get all these code on the GitHub repository links in the description. Then once we send the information it will go to this post request. Here we extract the message from the data and then we send this message to parse contact info. Here is the real magic happening where we are actually defining the system prompt as just extract the information and give me the response in a valid JSON. We are using the Llama 3.2 model. We have this message. We are appending the message as the normal user role where we are providing the real text which is coming from the UI. Then finally we have described all these things here and remember we have created this contact in form, contact form uh, pydentic model. Now what I'm going to do instead of this, I'm going to replace it with the contact form uh, dot JSON schema. Okay, great. That's done. Finally printing just to have everything here and also returning this response in the UI on the front end. If something goes wrong, I have this error handling. Cool. Let's try this. So I have this message. I send this message. It's going to there, giving the messages successfully sent and stored in the local storage. You can see this is the information. Maybe we can try once again. We can see that, hey, we have all these things. Great. Name, email, message, phone number. Nice. Now, next is we need to implement the image system. So, how we can do that? Remember, I have created a some simple uh, form which is just going to import the image and here we have an input field for the image. Once we have the image, we handle the image. We show the simple preview URL, image preview on the UI before sending it by converting it into create object URL. Once done, then we will going to send the image along with the message we have. 
So if I reload, yes, we have this image. We can select the image and then you can see this is the preview of the image. We can hit send, but we need to also handle this on the back end. So I already have that. So I'm going to just undo everything. Okay. So once again, we have this root where we have the contact HTML form, which is this one. And then, then we have this post request on this contact where just like before, we are having this message as well as the image, but we need to provide the image path. So if we have the image, we are getting the image path from there. Once we get the image path, then we pass the message as well as the image path to our AI model. Now here we have a system prompt. Once again, we don't need these things. Okay. Like that. Now, if we have the model, then if we have the image, then we are using the Llama 3.2 vision model. Otherwise we will use the Llama 3.2 model, the normal text model. If we have the image, then instead of content, we need to provide the array of the image URL. Remember, we are passing the URL from here. And that's why on this point, if we have the image, then instead of con context, we are providing the images. And since we just have one image, we are providing the image URL in the array. Once everything is done, then we can once again use our contact info uh, model schema. And then everything is similar to the previous thing. Great. So this time, once again, I'm going to choose the image, which is exactly the screenshot of this like that. And once it's done, then it's going to show me the loading and very soon it will give the information from this image only. Okay, so this is completed. So we just say, okay. And yeah, information is there. Again, it missed it. Great. So information is there. That's really, really nice. And we have completed this simple, amazing application using the Olama, the local model in our, uh, in our system. And we can create something cool with this kind of things. As AI is progressing, we are getting really closer to running the model entirely on our local thanks to things called Olama. So if you like this video, if you have got something from this video, please go and share this video with your friends, which is important. Tell them that, hey, something is there. Future of technology, future of programming is here on these kind of things, not just in the, in the name of programming language or framework or maybe just monstack. That's just old stuff. This is the future. So go and get into this because if you're not getting into the wave of AI, you will be left out. You have to update yourself. So these kind of videos are going to help you. And for more update on the AI, for more amazing things on the AI, please subscribe to Bitfinks YouTube channel. And I'm going to meet you in the next video. Till then, goodbye.